This is Evan Abrams, and today we're going to be working from Illustrator into After Effects and maybe back again. There's a lot of things to remember when you're taking files made in Illustrator and then working with them in After Effects. A bunch of people have asked me to talk about this subject, so we're going to try to make this thing that I'm showing you in the intro, which I made entirely in Illustrator and then brought into After Effects and then animated there. Uh, it's not actually that complicated, but Many times you'll find the drawing tools in Illustrator are far superior to the drawing tools in After Effects, even though there have been great strides in what you can do with the shape layers and the pen tools, and you can animate the things that you create in After Effects. But for a lot of the good, solid drawing tools, and especially if people are bringing you artwork, like clients or whatever, are bringing you things in Illustrator or EPS or whatever they are, you're going to need to edit them somehow in Illustrator and bring them into After Effects, so we'll go over some tips for doing that. So uh, let's stop watching this infinite loop that I lazily made in about five minutes and get into the tutorial. So our work does not begin here in After Effects. Instead, it will be starting here in Illustrator. Now, I won't be going over anything about drawing because I am a horrible drawer and illustrator, but uh, you know what? I get by. I get by. You know, it's not difficult. Just draw some lines start drawing things. I guess I'm better than most people, but certainly I'm not as good as I've seen. But one thing I want to talk about here in Illustrator is setting up your files so you can take them from here, put them into After Effects. One of the things you need to realize is any separate thing that you want separate has to be on its own separate layer. So what that means is all the component parts that I want to split apart, this AI for example, that has to be on its own layer. And then we have, you know, this other thing here, it's on its own layer too. And then this background, that's on its own layer. And then own layer, own layer, all that stuff. So say for example, you're creating a character, you wanna draw all of the parts you intend to move and change and put them on different layers. Now, that might not be entirely true, you'll find out why later, but just remember, if you're working on old versions of After Effects and Illustrator, separate it to layers, save yourself the problem. That's kind of the same thing that you want to do in Photoshop too. So just make sure you label all of your layers about what they are and to uh, save the project. And then we go into After Effects. Now in here, you're just going to import some stuff. So this is an AI Adobe Illustrator file. You're going to import it. You want to import it as a composition retaining the layer size, or you want to use a footage meaning you're gonna bring in a layer or all of the layers merged together. But what I'm gonna do is composition retain layer size, meaning that this will be the size of this layer and this will be the size of this layer. If it was document size, it would be the size of this frame here, the artboard. So that's what that means. Anyway, so bring it in, composition retain layer size, import, whoop de woo so we've brought in this composition, and then we have all of the layers of that. So that's super good. So if we go into the composition here, you see it's, you know, HDTV 1080 frame, because that's the size of the artboard, and it's got a bunch of these layers. And now you can take them, you can move them, you can deal with their properties. If you're going to scale them, you're going to want to click on this collapse transformation so that they retain their lovely vectorness as you do that. Um, that's just a general thing. So if you're going to be using 3D, which we are, you also want to be using that so their scaling doesn't get funny. And then we're going to give them all motion blur, blah, 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 blah. That's one way to work with these files, and certainly it's a good way to work with them too. This is the classic workflow. You bring them in here, then you do that to them. However, we have new tools at our disposal that I just want to touch on briefly, that if you right-click on here, you can go Create Shapes from Vector Layer, and what that's going to do is it's going to convert that layer, poking the eye out of the original layer, it's going to convert them into lines. It doesn't work perfectly every time, and that's because it's borrowing a coordinate system from one program to another. And what that means is sometimes things end up way out in space, which you don't want. So if that happens, don't panic. I'm going to show you how to fix that problem. You're going to select that layer, hit UU to bring up everything that's weird and wonderful and new about it. And in transform group, you're going to hit 0, 0, which will bring it pretty close. And then anchor point will also go 0, 0, and then it's right where it needs to be. So within this group, what we can see has happened is we have path one, which is the inside path. We have path two, that's the outside path. We have a merge path being 
you know, applied to this, which is the compound path that we had here in Illustrator. So we're looking at specifically this piece right here. So it has taken the outside, the inside, and then it's made that Boolean operation to cut that hole. So if we solo this, that's what you got. You've got a shape layer derived from those. So if, for example, you want to bring this in and then you want to add, you know, maybe a trim path to it, or you want to bring in a wiggle path or something, you can now do that um, however you would like and uh, enjoy that. And you can do so much with it now that you've converted it into things you can work with here in After Effects. So for example, you can add a stroke to it. It's like, hey, I want to add a stroke to that. And then, you know, that stroke should be like this. And you can further edit and refine your edits. And in fact, After Effects will pick up things like gradient fills. It'll pick up stroke widths. It'll pick up so many things and transpose those into these layers. And then, you know, if you want to edit stroke widths, you can you can keyframe that and you can do all sorts of things. So this conversion is probably one of the biggest, you know, things that is great for bringing artwork from Illustrator into After Effects. And a lot of people ask me, how do I convert or how do I do that? Well, I just showed you. That's how you do it. Import it and then make shapes, shape layers from vector layers. And you can do that with lots of other things, but that is how that is done. So Moving on with the example, basically all I did was, you know, without getting into any of that bric-a-brac, is I took all of these layers, I made them all 3D, as you can see, and then I just offset their positions here. So we've got this AI here, I gave that a position like minus 500, so push it towards the camera. Took the border here and gave it a position of minus 1000, pushing it further towards the camera. Uh, has a background on here. I gave it like a minus one, so it comes a little bit towards the camera. And then going backwards, the AE back there, I went to positive 500, so pushing it away. You know, the frame for that part is positive 1000, and then its background is positive one. Okay, super D duper. Everything is, you know, it's got the 3D, it's got the collapse transformations, it's looking fancy. Next thing I wanted to do was take these elements and scale them so they all make sense. So the backgrounds, we need to scale so that they fill up as backgrounds should. And then we go take the AE and the AI, and then we scale those up to fit, you know, more or less correct in their space. We will have to take the AE, and we're gonna take its rotation, and we're just gonna spin it 180, so that when we spin this whole piece around, then it's gonna make sense. So. Then I create a new composition, call it whatever, make it whatever size, super pretty good. And then we take the logo parts, bring that down on here. I'm gonna create a new camera and go 24 millimeter preset. Cool, thanks, I know there's no 3D things here. Till I do this, 3D, collapse 3D, 3D? I don't know why I said it like that. Then we take the camera, keyframe the position of that camera, you know, pulling the camera out. You know, so you can do this weird kind of parallaxy thing like this. And then really we're just gonna, you know, go ahead, set keyframes for things like the rotation. So something like the uh, Z and X rotation. Go ahead, some keyframes. Uh, what I was doing there was just holding down shift and hitting page up and down to move ahead 10 keyframes either direction. And then, uh, you know, we just go like uh, 180 on this and then spin this around 180 as well. What does that look like? It looks kind of like, whoa. So then you can do, you know, funny spinny things like that, if you so desire. Um, then you can do things like moving your camera in and out. You can do that. So start here, moves in, whoa, spinorama. Mm -hmm. And okay, that looks fine. I'm fine with that. Uh, do, 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 somewhere with the halfway point here. Maybe have that zoom out a little bit. And then I would take these keyframes in here, and then I would go rove across time, and take these keyframes on the end, and then I would easy ease them, so that's cool. Rove across time, uh, if you don't know, will cause these points here, when you look at the graph editor, to match the line that you've created with these points. So let's drag this along. So that would be like so. So what does that look like? Wow. Yeah, that's not exactly what I was going for, but whatever. All right, take these, easy ease those, and then we're just gonna line those up with the roved keyframes. 
Woo! All right, that looks fancy enough. And then we just take those, give them the old handle squish. You know, like these fancy terms, things like handle squish. Anyway, so as you can see, we started off with some Illustrator layers. We brought them into After Effects. We made them 3D. Now it looks super good. Now you can do some stuff like, do you want to add like a background, make new, you know, adjustment layer to add some things like blurs. You can add a new solid back there, make it a white solid. You know, do that. Uh, where's my effects window? Effects and presets. Why can't I find that? I have no idea what my layout is. All right, sorry. Here it is. We can put on something like uh, my vignettes. Boom. You got to get them vignettes. Those are great. We can do something, you know, like I did. I could just tint this down. I could do that. And then I could give it a curves. You know, if I so desired. I could do whatever. I'm an adult. Um, do, 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 do. Something like this. You know, I'm feeling happy with that kind of a thing. Um, you should probably put in some lights, so like new light, good, okay, so that looks fancy. I'm going to parent the light to the camera, and then we change the light's position to be like zero, 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 so spot on with the camera. That's really doing it for me. Yeah, and you can do lots of things like that, but none of those have anything to do with the Illustrator to After Effects thing that you came here to learn about, so I'm sorry for that tangent. But the big thing that I really wanted to get across to you is if you're using older versions of Illustrator, older versions of After Effects, you're not going to be able to do that conversion thing. So you want to make sure that your Illustrator file is broken up into layers. And if anybody is sending you these files, you should make it clear to them that you want it broken up into layers like this so it's not confusing. But if you must break things up, you can select all the contents of a layer and then you can go in here and you can go release to layers, which will take everything in that layer. So for example, look, let's just look at this uh, AI here, right? So I've got this, I go create outlines. So I've turned it from text into outlines. I'm gonna ungroup that a bunch so that on this layer, I have this eye, which, um, you know, I'd like to uh, release compound path. So I have a bunch of paths in here. I got three things. If I wanted to break these up into layers, I would select the layer, select everything on the layer, and then I would go to this menu, I'd say release to layers, which would create a new layer for each of the objects, grab those, and then drag it up like this. And then I have layers made out of all of those parts. So I just took one layer, broke it into a bunch of layers for all the parts, and then you can push these out to After Effects, you know, and then do that. But don't fear, because if you have a layer with a bunch of stuff on it, and then you import that layer, if you use the conversion, or that's an option that's available to you, when After Effects converts it, it's going to keep all of those shapes, and you can mess around with all those shapes relative to the new shape layer. So that's been a little bit verbose, but that is the basics of working from Adobe Illustrator into Adobe After Effects, and hopefully this has helped you out uh, to demystify some of the workflow between those two things. Again, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful. If it hasn't, then uh, uh, tough beans. But anyway, we make new tutorials on this channel every week. Some of them are good, some of them are like this one. Uh, I know it's not a lot of new fancy things, but these are fundamental basics that I hope that you can use to build other skills. We'll get into fancy stuff later, but uh, not right now. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, if you like this channel, subscribe to it. If you enjoy the stupid sound of my voice, uh, there are vlogs here sometimes, so you can enjoy those. And check out some of our older tutorials, because those are pretty good too. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Enjoy taking things from Illustrator into After Effects, and I will see you around the internet. Will I? Question mark?